Hi there, my name is Vishnu Dutt and in this video we will talk about the concept of Fusion Router in SDXs. Please watch this video till end as I have an announcement at the end which may be important for you. Once again, I am repeating my statement that if you want to learn a new concept, it is important to know that why at the first place this concept has come into picture, what problems this new concept is solving. Hence, we will begin this topic uh, with why exactly we need a fusion router in SDXS network. As some concepts such as route leaking, VRF light, and BGP loop avoidance is required to understand fusion router, we will understand them with an example. Do not worry guys if you don't know these concepts as we will discuss them in detail. Finally, we will discuss about how you can reach various services from Fabric using fusion router. Here, I would suggest to have a look at my video on SDXS virtual network, also known as VRFs, because understanding of virtual network in SDXS is important to understand the concept of fusion router. Okay, all set. Consider this diagram, this one. Here, we have our SDXS campus network. These are the edge nodes here, these one. We have control plane node here, and we have our border node. If you have any doubt about these nodes, please have a look at my previous videos of this educational series. As you guys probably know, that generally an enterprise network needs to be segmented into multiple VRFs for security reason and for isolation of traffic. Hence, we have divided our SDXS network by creating two virtual networks. There is virtual network green and virtual network red. You can see them here. If I say that we have created two virtual networks in this SDXS campus network, its meaning is that these two virtual networks are present on all the network nodes, which are these edge nodes here, border node and control plane nodes. Okay. The matter of the fact is that these virtual networks will be created on all fabric nodes by DNAC which is our central controller, okay? Now user green here is part of green virtual network and user red here is part of red virtual network. So far, so good. As you guys know that these users, that is user green and user red, required reachability to some services so that they could become part of the network. One example of such service is DHCP or dynamic host configuration protocol service. So when a user connects to the network, it requires an IP address, right? In almost all the cases, an enterprise runs a DSCP server somewhere whose responsibility is to assign IP address when a host or user joins a network. Similarly, these users also require reachability to DNS server to resolve name to IP address. The network devices of our fabric need connectivity to NTP server to synchronize their time. We call all such services like DHCP, DNS, NTP, etc. as shared services because these services are shared across multiple users and devices. Here you go. We can see our shared services here. I forgot to mention about Identity Services Engine or ICE, which is a very important shared service that authenticate and authorized users on the network. These shared services are present outside of the SDXS fabric. Sometimes these services are also present in data center. Here we can see a router also, this one, which has all the necessary routes to reach shared services. Okay. Now a big question here is how these users, these one, can get to the shared services. The answer is simple, that we need to connect this shared services router with our border router, right here. Is the solution this much simple? Can you spot the problem here? Suppose there is no VRF configured on shared service router, this one here, this means that all the shared services routes are present in global routing table or GRT, correct? But here on border router, we have 
two VRF configured, which are VRF green and VRF red. So here we can see VRF green and VRF red. Correct. So what should this link look like? This one. Should it be part of global routing table, GRT, or should it be part of green or red virtual network? Where will you do the route leaking? Till this point, I presume that you got to know that there is an existing issue which is stopping these fabric users to reach the shared services. This is an interesting problem, right? And this is where Fusion Router will come into picture. Okay, let's discuss the solution now. Consider this router. This is our border router. We know that it has two VRFs. Here are the two VRFs, VRF green and VRF red. The global routing table or the default VRF is shown with light blue color here, correct? Here we have shared services connected to the shared services router. For our first case, let's presume this shared services router has all the routes to shared services in global routing table or GRT. So suppose we have a DSCP server in shared services which is a part of network 172.16.1.0 slash 24. Okay. Shared services router is learning this route via BGP and this route in, is in its GRT or global routing table. Now let's connect border router to this shared services router. It is important to pay attention on the color of the link. As you can see, on shared services router side, we have light blue color that signifies that these two interfaces are part of global routing table or GRT. On the contrary, on border router, the first interface is part of green VRF and the second interface, this one, is part of red VRF. Okay. Let's say you are running BGP on these two interfaces. Here at the border side, we have BGP AS number as 100. And here, this side, we have BGP AS number as 200. Let's consider two more routes from the campus side. Suppose network 10.1.10.0/24 is part of VRF green and 10.1.20.0/24 network is part of VRF red and we are advertising these network via BGP towards shared services router here okay once done this router will have two more routes in the BGP table this router so overall this router has three routes learned via BGP and what are those routes first one is 172.16.1.0/24 Second one is 10.1.10.0/24, and third one is 10.1.20.0/24. Border router will learn shared services DSCP route in both of its VRF. So finally, at border router, green VRF routing table will have 10.1.10.0/24 and 172.16.1.0/24. Route and red VRF routing table will have 10.1.20.0/24 and 172.16.1.0/24. This way, the users in SDXS Fabric can reach to shared services. Wait a minute. Do you see another issue here? Can you tell me why VRF green doesn't learn 10.1.20.0? Slash 24 route from shared services router or why VRF red here doesn't learn 10.1.10.0 slash 24 route from shared services router. The answer is simple. BGP avoids loop based on AS path. When route 10.1.10.0 slash 24 is advertised to this router, BGP will set AS path value as 100. Right? When this route is advertised by this router towards border router over the below link, this one, this router attaches AS200 as AS path value. 
hence the as path value will become 100 comma 200 right when border router gets this route in red vrf it immediately discards it as as it sees its own as number in as path attribute of the route correct this is simple ebgp loop avoidance mechanism right guys so this router this one which we were referring as shared services border router is the key here as it is responsible for the fusion of routes it is learning from shared services with routes learned from border router in sdxs terminology we call this router as fusion router the main function of this router is that it allows the users in different sdxs virtual networks to reach shared services fusion router configuration is not automated by dna controller and manual configuration is required on this router one another important question here is can we use another routing protocol between border and fusion router and the answer is yes we can use eigrp or ospf here but the issue with these protocols will be that green vrf will learn 10.1.20.0/24 route along with 172.16.1.0 route from fusion router and red vrf will learn 10.1.10.0/24 along with 172.16.1.0 correct so what is the problem if these vrfs learn route from each other the main issue is that if these vrfs learn route from each other the users in green vrf can talk to users in red vrf via fusion router and you don't want to do that the reason is that you have segmented your sdxs network into two vrfs because you don't want that the users in this vrf can talk to each other if these users can talk to each other then it is wiser to put them in same vrf at the first place correct now let's discuss a case when fusion router is learning the shared routes in a vrf consider this diagram here bgp is running between fusion and border router here the fusion router is learning the dscp route 172.16.1.0/24 in shared service vrf okay here this one so this interface this one is part of shared service vrf to make it more interesting we are extending both green and red vrf from border router to fusion router this can be done using vrf light technology and by making these interfaces as sub interfaces so these interfaces are sub interfaces now okay as you can see on fusion router we have three vrf configured now the goal is that shared services vrf should know the route from vrf green and vrf red vrf green here this one should have only the shared services routes vrf red also should have only the routes from shared service vrf how we can achieve this this is simple and can be achieved easily through route leaking the concept is that when we create a vrf in a router it gives us the flexibility to attach values to routes in that vrf this value or identifier is known as route target we can export or import the route based on these route target so consider this configuration for vrf green on fusion router here this one we are exporting the routes of this vrf using route target value 1 colon 1 and in this vrf we are importing all routes which match this route target value 3 colon 3 what is this 3 colon 3 value this is the route target export value in shared services vrf let's see the shared services vrf configuration here you go here we are exporting the shared services route with route target value of 3 colon 3 which we are importing in green vrf we are importing 1 colon 1 and 2 colon 2 in shared service vrf 1 colon 1 is fine but what is 2 colon 2 exactly you got it right 2 colon 2 is the route target export value of red vrf here you go take your time to understand these configurations the process which we are doing here is known as a route leaking so now the time of announcement as you would have noticed this educational series mainly talks about the concepts of sdxs 
which are really important when you implement them on real devices. I am in the process of creating a hands-on series on the same topic where we will see how things work on real devices. Along with this, I have noticed that there are many questions which are frequently asked in networking related job interviews. I will upload the videos on how to answer such questions effectively. Please do subscribe to my channel and you will get the notification of all my new videos. This was the last video of SDXS series and I hope you have enjoyed it. See you in next series of videos.